Abba Lerner, in alcuni suoi scritti, sostenne che la finanza funzionale può risolvere i problemi di disoccupazione importata dovuti ad un deficit delle partite correnti. Tale disoccupazione importata può anche essere affrontata con un programma di lavoro garantito. Lo stesso deficit di partite correnti potrebbe condurre ad un problema di indebitamento estero? In tale contesto, come considera l'attuale esperienza della Turchia e dell'India, che stanno affrontando una riduzione delle loro riserve in valuta estera e un deprezzamento dei loro tassi di cambio dovuti ai movimenti internazionali di capitale? Abba Lerner, in some of his writings, wrote that the functional finance approach can resolve the imported unemployment due to the current account deficit. This imported unemployment could also be phased with a job guarantee program. Could the same current account deficit lead to a foreign debt issue? In this context, how do you consider the experience of Turkey and India that are facing a decrease in their reserves of foreign currency and exchange rates depreciation because of international capital movements? Well, the um, first, of course, in India has implemented a um, uh, a sort of a job guarantee in rural areas. A hundred days of work are guaranteed to, to anyone who shows up ready and willing to work. Um, so they are doing this. Now the question is whether it's going to uh, either cause a current account deficit or worsen a current account deficit. And this is a great fear. I, I understand this. Um, my response is that first it's really, this is more of a moral position. It's, it's not, I think, a moral, it's not a morally appealing argument that we need to keep people unemployed and so poor that they can't afford to buy things in order to keep our current account in surplus. I think we need to give jobs we need to eliminate unemployment. We need to e eventually eliminate poverty. And let's deal with the current account uh, uh, situation in a different way. Let's go ahead and uh, constrain the consumption of the high income people because they contribute much more usually to a current account deficit than the poor people do. And so I think that it's immoral to say, let's put the whole burden of fighting current account deficits on the backs of the poor and the unemployed. Let's put that burden on the wealthy people who are probably buying luxury imports and let's try to constrain that. So that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach it is that what you want to do uh, in this situation with the job guarantee program, you want to provide um, jobs and income and raise living standards at the bottom in a way that doesn't contribute to the current account deficit. And you can do that in one of two ways. One, you focus the job creation on economic development in order to increase productive capacity, some of which could go to exports or toward enhancing tourism which is another way of exporting. And so you do that. But more importantly, what you do is you try to increase living standards by producing domestically to satisfy the needs of the people who are getting these jobs. So you want to produce things that will increase their living standard producing domestically so that you don't have to rely on imports. So it, the job guarantee program is a path or can be used as a path to enhance development in order to increase productive capacity so that you don't have to rely on imports. So that's more the economic answer, and I al already gave the moral answer. It's, uh, I think, immoral to use unemployment as a way to fight against a trade imbalance.